Welcome to Proverbs for Life Today, a ministry of ChristAssembly.org. My name is Bert Allen. How would you like to have righteousness, justice, equity, and every good way in your life today? Well, we're going to read a proverb that'll tell us about how that can happen. You see, Jesus loves us today, and he loves you today, and he reaches out to you in love and says, your sins need to be forgiven, and I'm the only one who can do it. I died on the cross, Jesus said. He said he died on that cross, not for his sins, he had none. He died on that cross for every rotten, miserable thing I have done in my entire life and will do in the future. Jesus died for that. And he said, not only did I die and shed my blood and cover the death penalty for you and took away the anger of God the Father over sin, he said, and I'm going to be raised up on the third day, and he was, bodily. And he says, I live forever for you because I love you, and I want you to be with me in my Father's house. I'm going to prepare a place for you that you'll be with me forever and ever. Jesus really loves us. And he loves us and wrote the Old Testament. He loves us and told us, hey, you want righteousness, justice, equity in every good way? Well, that starts, my understanding, Proverbs chapter 2, verse 9. And I'm going to read it out loud. I'm so happy you have a moment or two to sit down and hear the word of God. This is the word of God we're reading here. It's God speaking and revealing himself to us so we know what he's like. Same God in the New Testament, same God in the Old Testament. Verse 9, then you will discern righteousness and justice and equity and every good course. So here's the thing. None of this study is going to make any sense to you if you've never been born again. So I urge you today to be born again. And if you want to know how to do that from the Bible, stick around to the end of the video. I'll be standing in front of a bricks background. And you can hear from the scriptures how you can be born again and have a brand new life in Jesus starting today by faith in him. But back to verse 8 now. Then, so in these Proverbs, they're linked together. Because if you'll walk in integrity, you'll count on God to help you. You'll listen to wisdom. That God will give you that. And once you receive that wisdom that only God can give you. A lot of people think, oh, I'm wise according to this world. I'm wise. I grew up on the streets. I'm wise. I grew up in the big city. Oh, no, I'm wise. I grew up on a farm. Well, all those things have one thing in common. That's the wisdom of this world. And by the wisdom of this world, people never came to know Jesus. They never came to know God because the wisdom of this world is earthly, natural, and demonic. That's what the book of James tells us. But the wisdom from God begins with the fear of God and leads to more fear of God. But it also leads to understanding how his love and his fear go right together. That he wants us not to put him to the test, not take him for granted, but worship him as God and feel the love of God the Father. Feel the love of Jesus Christ. Feel the love of the Holy Spirit indwelling you each day. Do you get pumped just reading the Bible? I do, I love it. But back to the text. Then, when you're filled with God's wisdom, you will discern. See that word discern? Discern means that you can get it now. That you understand this is bad and this is good. This is what God wants. This is what God hates. You can't really lean on your understanding, your own understanding to do that. You got to have God's revelation and his wisdom working in your life for that to really happen. But you're going to discern righteousness. You know, Jesus was called the righteous one because he always does the right and perfect thing. He always does what God wants. He never falls short of the glory of God. But he also brought about justice. You see, justice required a death penalty for sin. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. And it said that we've all sinned and we all fall short of the glory of God. So we all would be backing away from justice. I heard a fellow say, he told a story. 
he said a woman came to him, he was a pastor, and asked that he would pray for her son who was facing some serious jail time, maybe even penitentiary time, for the terrible crimes he committed. And the pastor told him, told the woman, I'll pray for justice for your son. You know, I concluded right then that I probably wasn't going to ask him to pray for me because I want people to pray not for justice. In my life, if I got justice, I'm toast. I want people to pray for God's grace in my life that I'm going to get stuff I don't deserve because God loves me. So grace means that I get God's riches at Christ's expense. I get it for free, but God paid for it. Jesus paid for my grace with his blood. But back to justice. Justice means that God can't just live on grace and send out grace to us all the time in the sense of blowing off our sin. Justice requires payment for that sin. And we don't have the ability to pay for it. We're sinners. But Jesus was holy and righteous, sanctified by God, sent into the world to die on the cross to bring about justice. He's going to give his life, his perfect spotless life, for me on that cross. Justice is served. The death penalty has been paid by Jesus. His blood has atoned for our sin and propitiated, that's a fancy way of saying, assuaged the anger. And that's a fa fancy way of saying he satisfied God's wrath. So we're going to be able to discern, number one, righteousness. Number two, justice. Equity. You know, in many courts in America today, there's a holdover from an old English system of courts. And one side of the court is called the law side, and the other side's called the equity side. And justice can be done in both, but equity says, you know, there may not be a law covering this, but just the right thing to do, taking all the facts into consideration, the equitable thing to do or the equitable remedy where monetary damages may not be sufficient or no other remedy will do, but there's something in equity we can do to work this all out. Well, you know, in our lives, we need God's equity at work in our lives. The law may not cover everything we need to do, but God can help us to do equity, like have clean hands when we deal with other people. We're not coming with really dirty hands and saying, they're bad. Well, you know, when your hands are black, if you want to do equity, you must have equity. You must be ready to do the fair and right thing. But I'm going to call that number three. We can now discern equity. And then we can also discern every good course. I'm going to call that number four. So back to where we were. A good way or a good course means that we're going to take the path that God wants. How many times have you figured out you took the wrong path, that something bad happened? Well, you know, God says I can make you see the right way to go. Whether it's at home or at work, whether it's a huge career decision or a huge life decision about who to marry or how to raise your kids or how to treat your wife or your husband or parents or grandparents or in-laws or friends. God says, I can give you a good course. I can help you to get home. You know, we used to go out on our boat out in the ocean and we go past the side of land. And in the old days, you just had a compass. And then you had a thing called Loran where you could punch in some numbers and it'd tell you on a Loran map where you were. Then it got better. GPS came along. And nowadays, where no matter where you are in the face of the earth virtually, you can press a button on your electronic machine with GPS and a chart plotter. Not only will it tell you where you're at, it'll tell you the course to take to get home or wherever you want to go. It knows every good course. It can plot them and send you home the right way. God says he's better than GPS, much better. He said, I can show you every good course. I can help you with equity. I can help you with justice. I can help you see righteousness. But remember, it's that word discern. You can see it now. You know what to do. You have it all mapped out by God. 
But that's something you can discern only as a born-again believer. You want justice, equity, in every good way? You want all that righteousness? You want to discern that? Today's the day. Get right with Jesus. If you've already been born again and you've been ignoring that discernment, no problem. Confess. Say, Lord, I'm sorry I hadn't asked before, but I'm asking now. I want your wisdom in my life so I can discern righteousness, justice, equity, and every good course. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word and how nice it is to see it and read it and be together with friends doing that. We pray your blessing upon our life, Lord. May we discern all of these good things. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Before I close the video, I'd like to share with you four verses about eternal life. I often ask people this simple question. Why should Jesus let you into heaven? And the answer to that question surprises many people because it comes from the Bible and it's simple and it's clear. Most folks, when they hear that question, they tell me, well, I've been good or tried to do more good than bad or I tried hard or I've done a lot of nice things and I hope God will let me into heaven. They somehow think if their good works outweigh their bad works that God will let them in. But God says, actually, I'll let people into heaven because of a free gift. But the story from Jesus starts with four verses, and I'm going to read them one at a time. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 You see, for every person who lives today on earth in human flesh, we've all sinned, every one of us. We've all told a lie. We've all done or said something that made somebody else angry and we were doing it out of anger ourselves. We've all done things to hurt other people at one time or another. God says that's all sin and I look upon that as falling short of my glory, God says. God says we should never fall short of his standard, which is the glory of God. Well, is it serious that we've sinned? Should I be worried about that? Everybody sinned. Why should I worry? Well, consider Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, that all of us deserve the death penalty. At the moment we sin, we incurred the death penalty for the smallest sin or the biggest sin. I'm happy that Romans 6.23 continues and says, But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, if you've been listening carefully and thinking about what the Bible says, so far, we've learned that we're all sinners, we all fall short of the glory of God, and we all deserve the death penalty. This doesn't sound like good news until you read the last part of that last verse. It says that God has a free gift for all of us. It's in Christ Jesus our Lord, and it's eternal life. The free gift of eternal life that only Jesus Christ can give you. He said he's the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through Him. Why would God offer us this great gift if we're all sinners? Well, Romans 5.8 tells us. It says, But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for us. He died in our place. God loves sinners like you and like me. He died in my place and in your place. He paid the death penalty for me. I often illustrate the free gift like this. That I have this old Nissan truck. It has 285,000 miles on it. It's not that great a truck. It sits at the beach every day. But I illustrate the point this way. I hold up the keys to my truck and I say, I'm going to make you a symbolic gift of my truck. But until you take the keys out of my hand, it's not your truck yet. Well, let me tell you what I mean. A lot of people have been going to church for years. They know all about Jesus. They can quote verses about Jesus. But they know in their heart that they're not quite right with God. And there's never been a day in their life where they've been born again and they know it. You see, they're just staring at the keys in God's hand and he's offering you. The free gift today of saying, reach out by faith and receive that free gift and take it into your heart today. Receive the free gift 
Okay, how do we do that? Well, Romans 10.9 tells us how to do that. It says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And he means saved from the death penalty, eternal destruction. So we can receive that free gift right now by faith, and we can pray a prayer together. I urge you to pray with me. I'm going to pray it right now. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you love me. I confess that I am a sinner and I fall short of the glory of God. I confess, too, that I deserve the wages of sin, which is death. But, Lord, you offer me the free gift of eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. I accept that free gift right now. I believe that you love me and that God died on the cross for me, that Jesus Christ is God, and he died on the cross for me. You paid the death penalty for me, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much. I confess with my mouth Jesus is Lord, and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins, and I accept that free gift, Lord. Thank you so much that you have forgiven me, and your name I pray. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, I'd love you to send me an email and we'll rejoice together. Send me the email at friend at christassembly.org. That's friend at christassembly.org. I look forward to hearing from you. Hallelujah. <laughs>